All right, all right, all right, okay. Tottenham away, Arsenal away, in a matter of days, two London derbies, six points, mate. Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing all right. Like I said, as per usual, when we win, if you're a Chelsea fan, odds are you're doing all right. Welcome to the match review of Chelsea's 2-1 win away at the Emirates. Mikel Arteta's first game at home as Arsenal manager. And yes, Chelsea come from behind to win 2-1. Oh, superb and delicious scenes indeed if you are new to football therapy make sure you do subscribe to the channel hit the bell notifications icon like the goddamn video right let's get into it all right i want to talk about what happened through the game i'm going to take you through a journey and tell you what go on so let's open the analysis screen right next to me is the who scored match center for statistics lineup and all that kind of stuff right then frank lampard went for the free for free and in theory although this was really poor last time out against southampton in the first half Kovacic was back in, Mason Mount was starting, it's against a uh, 4-2-3-1 like Tottenham was away. In theory, you think this is going to work, it's going to be a lot better, right? Wrong! It was really bad. Arsenal are all over Chelsea in the first 10 minutes, Chelsea can't get to the ball to any of their forwards, and they look unsettled, Arsenal have obviously got the feel-good factor, but ta 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 tactically, Arsenal were on top. Now, after actually quite a promising looking Chelsea set piece routine where they cut the ball back and do a few bits and nearly score, Arsenal go up the other end and score. It's after a corner, there's a glancing header of the ball and Aubameyang gets away from Emerson, the left wing back at the time, and scores what is a lovely header. And I'm gonna say it now, credit when credit's due, Aubameyang for Arsenal was amazing this game, or at least until he got completely gassed. Obviously he scored that goal, it was a great goal, but he was amazing defensively, he was mobile, he was playing on the flank, he was getting back. He was by far and away Arsenal's best player, and although I want to wax lyrical about Chelsea and how well Chelsea have done, he really deserves a mention on their part. I mean, David Luiz was pretty good as well, but Aubameyang was excellent. Right, let's get into the good stuff. To be honest, in my notes, the good stuff doesn't come for like a little while. <laughs> Here's me writing, Arsenal are making all the positive moves in the opening 20 minutes. Against Tottenham, it felt like Chelsea had an extra man. In this game, it feels like Chelsea have one less man. Tactically, Chelsea look inferior in the opening 30 minutes, and forwards can't get into the game. I've already said that to you. In the 34th minute, Lampard had had seen enough of this not working plan, essentially, and he made a tactical change. And his substitutions and tactical in this uh, tactical change in this game from Frank Lampard was superb. He needs a huge shout out. Great coaching, great managerial performance from Frank Lampard, but he takes off left wing back Emerson, who obviously was poor and. Uh, letting Aubameyang run for the goal, but also he wasn't looking very good. Brings on Jorginho and plays a 4-3-3. So, Tomori goes into the left-back position. Chelsea start picking up a few <laughs> yellow cards, and throughout this game, both sides pick up a lot of cards, and it gets a bit tasty later on, but there's a lot of challenges in this game. 37th minute, right? Chelsea should have had a penalty. I know later on you could easily say Jorginho should have been sent off for a second yellow, but this would have been a second le yeah, a second yellow, excuse my English in this video for being overexcited from the Chelsea win. But Ken Doozy should have been sent off. He pulled Tammy Abraham to the ground in the penalty area. It would have been a second yellow, one man off. Jorginho was on the pitch at that point. He would have converted the penalty as he always does. And then it's 1-1 at half time and Arsenal have 10 men. Although Chelsea look better in the new shape, it becomes a bit scrappy and they come into the game a bit more but not enough and the half time whistle comes 1-0 Arsenal. Chelsea start the second half better with no changes at the break but they start getting into it more and more the first sort of 5 minutes, the first sort of 10 minutes, they look brighter and brighter. And it's the 59th minute, Frank Lampard takes a risk that had pretty much everyone scratching their heads. We all know about the youngster Lamptey who's highly rated, who's on the bench today as a conventional right back, Reese James is obviously injured. He comes on for Tamori, who's not doing the best at right back for a conventional right back footballer, essentially. And he plays really well in this game, so big ups, Lamptey. Apparently, PSG have been chasing him and are really interested in him, but hopefully, they can go away. 70th minute is a really interesting one. Kovacic comes off for Callum Hudson Odoi. So obviously, Mason Mount drops from the left wing into the midfield, more creativity. And uh, Hudson Odoi goes onto the left wing, who's been not playing great at late. He's been making mistakes. He didn't make a couple in this game, but generally, Hudson Odoi was very positive in this game and had loads of 
quite a lot of positive effect on that left wing. The game is becoming really, really spiky, and although Chelsea are in the ascendancy towards the latter stages of the game, it does look like it might not happen for them, and it just might look like it might be fouls, arguments, fights, and no more goals. Until, of course, there's a goal. <laughs> 84th minute, Jorginho. Okay, Paul from Leno after a set piece, he needs to get a hand to it, and really, Jorginho is just running in behind and t is a tap in. It's an easy goal, but. And this is after the, you know, you could make an argument Jorginho should have been sent off at this point, but so could Gendouzi. It was poor officiating. Maybe, you know, karma leveled things out. Jorginho makes it even, and you think, right, Chelsea can go and win this now. And minutes later, the 87th minute, Chelsea do some defending in their own half, because although they're in the ascendancy in this game, when um, Arsenal break, they do look lethal, because obviously they're a good attacking and also a counter-attacking team. Chelsea break forwards themselves. It's Mount on the left, Tammy down the middle, uh, Willian on the right, Tammy's carrying the ball, he plays it to Willian, the, the pass looks overcooked, but Willian gets the ball, cuts it back, Tammy Abraham finishes between Bert Leno's legs, absolute scenes, 2-1 in the 87th minute to Chelsea. Now there are 7 minutes stoppage time from this game due to a collision between uh, Antonio Rudiger and Mustafi. So there's a lot of stoppage time, but Chelsea are very professional. They take the ball to the corner. They actually have a chance to score again, where Tammy really should have passed it to Willian, but you know, he's a striker, throw it on goal, he's gonna score. I mean, he thinks he's gonna score. He didn't score. And that's it. Chelsea win, 2-1. Two, two away games in a matter of days in terms of London derbies. Six points, absolutely superb and lovely scenes from Chelsea Football Club. Let's talk about player performances and get rid of the analysis screen. Right, so the most notable thing about this was Chelsea, or certainly Frank Lampard, got this game wrong. I mean, you could say maybe he didn't know much about Mikel Arteta and what he was going to do, but it was a 4-2-3-1 and it didn't work. Jody Morris got in his ear and said, look mate, this is not working, Frank, we've got to change it. And they did change it. It didn't take them long to do the tactical change and all substitutions ever since that tactical change were correct. Moving Tomori over while he had to go and then, you know, Azpilicueta moving over, bringing Tomori off for Lamptey. It was all kind of, I don't want to say a stroke of genius because it was a conventional fullback coming on, but it absolutely worked. Even Hudson Adoy offered something completely different. Sure, you can tell there's these moments that demonstrate a lack of confidence still, but generally, it was superb from coach Frank Lampard, and Chelsea rallied and never gave up. Jorginho, although a little bit naughty with his challenges, he changed the game as well. He's commanding. Chelsea were desperate for that on the pitch. He told people where to go. He got on the ball more. He started passing uh, between the lines, played, getting people playing between the spaces. And really, Arsenal couldn't cope with that. And as soon as that change was made, they were defending deep and Chelsea just made the combinations necessary. Scored the two goals, didn't give up. Chelsea see it through, they get all three points away at the Emirates Stadium, just as they did away at Tottenham. Sorry, I had to say it again, I had to say it again. Right, what does this mean? Well, Chelsea have a four point cushion now in the top four. To be honest, <laughs> so many of these home losses are really frustrating against lower league opposition, but they it's, it doesn't make up for it, these away performances, but it does demonstrate what they've got. Because Arsenal weren't terrible in that game. Sure, they made poor decisions, as did, as did Chelsea. Arsenal started really, really well. Chelsea's heads could have dropped, but they do have a touch of the never-die Chelsea attitude in them, and that's really, really important. Frank Lampard would have instilled that. If they can just beat a few more lower league table teams at home, they would be so comfortably in the top four right now. Who knows, maybe they'll get a much more up for the derbies at Stamford Bridge because they know how important it is. It feels like they've just got the pressure off their backs when they play away from home. And I think I heard a stat, I'm not entirely sure if this is correct, but I think so. Chelsea have scored the most amount of away goals in the Premier League this season, certainly more than Liverpool. So I don't know if that's as much as Manchester City, but they said even more than Liverpool in commentary. Really, the huge takeaways of this game was Frank Lampard making the right decisions with Jody Morris, of course, he was getting in his ear. Lamptey making a lot of difference on the right-hand side. Willian having a good game. Tammy Abraham having a good game. Mount having a good game when he got into the game. hudson Adoy having a huge positive impact in that game for himself as well. That's exactly what hudson Adoy needed. He needed to come off the bench and be a part of a Chelsea win away at Arsenal. That 
is exactly what the doctor ordered for Callum Hudson Odoi. And generally, there's a bit, there's, there obviously, there's high tensions between both teams. There's a bit of arguing between Antonio Rudiger and Kepa, which I didn't know if I liked or didn't like. It showed that there was just an infused passion. I'd much rather see two players arguing a bit than being passive and shrugging shoulders. Do you know what I mean? So, generally, Emotions are run high, passions are high, superb, superb win for Chelsea Football Club away at the Emirates, Frank Lampard against Mikel Arteta, <sighs> puts Chelsea in a good spot for the new year, they're in the top four, moving into 2020, they're in the knockout stages of the Champions League, and everything is looking rosy. Anyway, what do you think? Get down in the comments, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game and player performances. If you've enjoyed this video today, please do like the video, and remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you are indeed new to the channel, and you can follow me on social media, at Football Yannick, on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot, enjoy the football. I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby